what's going on guys barber j back with another video hope you guys are having a great day hope everyone is well right now in london it's uh it's lockdown right now so all of us barbers are closed a lot of stuff is closed retail shops and stuff so i hope everyone is staying busy staying motivated and everyone is good thank you so much again guys for tuning in but let's get into the video for this haircut i've got a crop we're going for a skin fade uh, let's cut the top first so starting my profile line at the highest point of the head which is called the apex I take my section and I cut it to the front I'm rounding my fingers at the front so I've got less weight on the fringe this is the guide for the whole scissor work so you need to make sure this is at the correct length and it's at the correct shape when cutting the profile line make sure the client's head is straight make sure his chin is up otherwise the fringe is going to be longer so after cutting the profile line I comb everything over to the right and I start sweeping from the front Working my way straight down the middle, following my guide, which is gonna be in the middle, I cut the left and the right side of the profile line, and I keep my fingers square. The shape of this haircut is gonna be round, but in the middle column, I'm keeping it square, and then on the left and right column, I'm gonna to start to round my fingers and follow the shape of the head. So right here, I'm cutting the left column, doing the same technique, combing the hair over to the right, and I'm sweeping back, but this time, I'm pulling the hair 90 degrees and I'm rounding my fingers following the shape of the head. When I'm cutting the top with the scissors, it is very important to use the tips of your scissors to create a round shape. This allows you to have more precision and there will be less corners, which is not what you want when you're doing a round layer. When I'm sweeping the hair starting from the front, make sure you take small sections. Each column that you're cutting from the front to the back, you should be taking at least minimum five sections. So when I'm cutting the back, the guide that I'm using is coming from the apex, which is at the highest point of the head where I started my profile line. I'm pivoting around this point, cutting it round, following the shape of the head. And to make it easier, I'm always standing on the left side, cutting towards the face. So after the top is done, make sure you cross check it and I'm just gonna dry it in its natural position doing a bit of rough drying and then using my comb to smoothen it out. Now that the hair is laying down nice and flat, I'm gonna use a number two to create a nice shape and to remove any excess weight that I don't need. When I'm using this guard, I'm trying to blend it into the top as much as I can and I'm using my comb to feed the hair into my clippers. This is gonna help with the blending process later on, which is your scissor over comb, your clipper over comb, all that type of stuff. So starting my fade with my Andes Supras with the outliner blade, I'm gonna create a nice clean placement line. This is how I normally create my placement line. I go towards the back of the ear, make sure my guide is there, and then I create another guide at the back and I just connect the two lines together. The outliner blade that I'm using is not super short, so the line is not gonna to be too harsh. That means you're gonna to have to go over it with your trimmers afterwards. So same again on this left side, I take it to the mastoid which is behind the ear and then I connect it in from the back. You always want to give yourself a guide, it will make it easier, try this one out. So now I'm just quickly using my T outliners to clean up any excess hairs that I've missed. Um, it's not going to take me long because the bulk is removed, I'm just going over it very quickly to make sure it's nice and clean. So when I use my foils, it's going to be easier. I like to get rid of everything below the line first. Some people like to do it after the fade, but I just like to get rid of all of that so it's not in the way. Also, when I'm doing a fade, if I leave that bit longer at the bottom, it's harder for me to visualize what it's actually gonna look like while I'm doing it, if you know what I mean. So now with the 0.5, no guard, leave it all the way open. I'm gonna create another line and I'm just pushing it up about a centimeter. Around the back, sometimes I take it a little bit higher like that because the hair is more dense and it's slightly harder to fade. So I like to create myself more space to stretch out the fade. Now I'm inserting my next guideline, which is gonna be the one open doing the same technique, pushing it up about a centimeter. Here I'm just going back with my two 
because I saw a bit of weight which I wanted to remove before I started my fade. Now starting my fade working down, I'm using a one and a half guard, blending the one open into the two. So now I've got two more lines to fade out. I need to fade the 0.5 into the one open, which is what I'm doing now. I'm using the 0.5 guard to fade this in. I'm blending it straight into the one open, so I'm actually missing out the one closed. You can go back with it afterwards, but in this case, it actually looks all right. I might go back over it afterwards when I'm refining my work. Now I've got my last line that I need to fade out. I'm just using no guard, fully closed, and I'm slowly opening that lever to fade out that line. I usually fade down by closing my lever, but for this final line, I like to slowly open my lever so I can control how high to take each level, which is like a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, like each increment on the lever. Sometimes you get left with a line which you can't remove with your clippers, which is in between your foils and your zero placement line. So I go back with my T outliners and I just flick it out. Also, my clippers are not fully zero gapped. They're quite tight, but they're not fully zero gapped. I'd rather just go back with my outliners rather than risk cutting my client. So I've shown you my steps, how I fade. This is the normal way how I fade. I'm just gonna repeat the same steps on the side and the back. In my next video, I'm gonna show you another way of fading where I skip guards. So make sure you stay tuned, subscribe, turn on your notification bell and like the video. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that. My boy Hamza in the chair, he's enjoying his trim. Good vibes only. Cool, so in this video, I've kind of told you the steps and what I'm doing. I haven't really explained how I'm doing it. So right now, I'm gonna explain more in depth of how I'm using my clippers. To control your clippers, there's three main things you need to focus on. The pressure, the angle of your clippers, and the speed, how fast your hand is moving. So with the pressure, you wanna use more when you're engaging your clippers, going through the line, fading the line out. And when you're flicking, when you're trying to blend into the longer lengths, you wanna use less pressure. So with the angle of the blade, you wanna make sure your, your blade is flat on the head. Otherwise, it's not gonna cut true to the length that you have on. So when you're fading out a line, make sure the clipper is flat on the head. And then when you start to flick out, you wanna make sure you wanna change the angle so you blend into a longer length. You kinda of wanna scoop out of your clippers, kinda of like a C motion. And also the speed of your clippers that you're moving, you don't wanna to move too fast. Otherwise, the blade is not actually gonna cut the hair efficiently you want to go at a nice consistent speed but when you're flicking out you can flick it out a little bit faster so i usually go slower at the bottom when my clipper is fully engaged and then when i flick out i flick out a bit faster but you don't want to be moving too fast rubbing on the client's head it's not going to be comfortable for the client also you want to let the clippers do the work you don't want to work hard for your clippers you want the clippers to work for you so the fade is almost complete I'm just using a corner of my clip as a detail. And after that, I move straight into my scissor over comb to perfect and soften the blend. So when I'm doing scissor over comb, my comb is moving slow and my scissors are moving faster. I wanna try and keep my scissors and my comb parallel so it's at the same angle. Depending on the growth of the hair, I'm going at different angles, but make sure they're both at the same angle. Um, also, only one blade is moving. There's one static blade, which is at the bottom. That should be in line with the base of the comb. Only one of the blades should be moving, which is controlled with my thumb. But to cut the hair correctly, you need to be using your comb correctly. So make sure you go teeth down, comb the hair down to reset the hair before you lift the hairs up to cut. This is just one of many techniques to blend your clipper work into your scissor work. You could also use scissor over comb, you could use your blending shears, your thinning scissors, 
or you can also use like a higher guard like a number three or a number four depending on the style of the hair and the type of hair the client has you can switch up the techniques or you could even use quite a few of them so now i'm going to shape the fringe using my trimmers combing down the hair setting the hairs down nice and flat when you're shaping up the fringe make sure you use your mirror to check the balance mirror never lies i usually start a guide in the middle and then i work my way towards the corners i also rest the back of my fingers on the head for more support and stability there's a couple hairs just hanging over so i use my comb and i just do a bit of clipper over comb to blend it into the sides this corner here was a bit tricky so i had to use my comb to hold the hairs down to see them little hairs hanging over When you're shaping up, take it easy, take off bit by bit, and make sure you keep checking your work. Take a step back, have a look at it from a distance, and definitely use your mirror. These Andis T outliners are my go-to clippers. It's got the GTX blade on it. It's been adjusted perfectly. I've actually got them adjusted in um, the Upgrade Barbershop which is based over in LA when I went over there. Yeah, really cool guy called George. He customises and sharpens blades. He sorted me out, shout out to him. For the beard, I'm just going to keep the length just a little tidy up and I'm just going to sharpen it up give it some shape. Shout out to everyone that's watching. Big up to you lot. If you've made it this far into the video, I really appreciate it. And I've got a lot more good things coming for you guys. Also guys, make sure you follow my Instagram page if you guys are not already. Barber underscore Jace. You already know what it is. Hashtag chopsticks. So to finish off the haircut, definitely using some razor work to give it that extra, extra crispy, aromatic shape up. So right here, I'm doing the razor work dry. I'm not using any gel or water. You can if you want, but the hairs aren't too thick. They're quite fine. So doing it dry just gives me a bit more control with the blade. So finishing off this haircut definitely with a bit of texture to give it more movement and to make it easier for the client to style. So when I'm texturizing, I'm making sure my scissors and the hair is parallel so I don't ruin the shape of the haircut. Texturizing is good, gives it movement, but you don't want to ruin the shape. So don't over texturize it, otherwise you're going to ruin your layers that you've created. Just a bit of freehand texturizing now slicing away from the hair and there we have it guys making sure my client is nice and clean cleaning up the back of the neck before I style him up putting a bit of texture powder perfect for this style of hair and using my pompadour comb and just using it moving it side to side to create that nice textured look but thank you again guys for watching this video hope you guys have enjoyed it this is the before and boom, that is the after. Stay fresh, stay motivated, and stay safe. It's your boy Barbara Jace, peace and love. <laughs>